I would like to propose to you that due to the ubiquitous omnipresent phenomenon of multiple causation, the revival of a no longer spoken language is unlikely without cross-fertilization from the revivalists' mother tongues. Thus, revival efforts result in a language with a hybridic genetic and typological character. Multiple causation is manifested in the congruence principle, according to which the more contributing languages a linguistic feature exists in, the more likely it is to persist in the emerging tongue. Multiple causation occurs in Israeli, for example, in word order, some linguists call it constituent order. The Israeli default word order is subject, verb, object as in many European languages spoken by revivalists, as opposed to Biblical Hebrew, in which the default word order was verb, subject, object. Calking, loan translation, and phono-semantic matching, as we shall see later this week. The reality of linguistic genesis is far more complex than a simple family tree model allows. Reclaimed languages are unlikely to have a single parent. This congruence principle is applicable to all languages, and indeed to linguistic evolution in general. After all, every language is mixed to some extent. See Hjelmslev 1938, as well as Schuchart's 1884 statement, Es gibt keine völlig ungemischte Sprache. There is no language that is fully unmixed. Such congruence is a commonplace observation in pidgin and creole studies, as well as in research into many other languages. Kurzweil, for example, describes in 2002 how features found in several varieties are the most likely to survive in Koine formation. The congruence principle can be profitably used also to allow for grammatical features of Israeli. Hebrew grammatical features, which either serendipitously or due to an earlier Indo-European influence, were congruent with those of Yiddish and other European languages, were favored, and vice versa. The distinction between forms and patterns, which we have already discussed this week, is crucial too, as it demonstrates multiple causation. In the 1920s and 1930s, Gdud Megine Hasafa, the Language Defendants Regiment, whose motto was Ivri Daber Ivrit, Hebrew, speak Hebrew, that is, Jew, speak Hebrew, used to tear down signs written in foreign languages and disturb Yiddish theater gatherings. However, the members of this group only looked for Yiddish forms rather than patterns in the speech of the Israelis who did choose to speak Hebrew. Ironically, even the Language Defendants Regiment's anthem included a calc, a loan translation from Yiddish. The Language Defendants would not attack an Israeli speaker saying Manishma, literally, what does one hear, what is heard, that is, how are you, what's up, even though she or he actually uses a non-Hebrew pattern, a calc of Yiddish Vosherzach, what does one hear? That is, how are you? What's up? Or Russian Stoslishna, which means the same literally and actually. Or Polish Tsoswichach, ditto. Or Romanian Cese Aude, ditto. Let us now move from calking to another multiple causation phenomenon, a technique of lexical expansion called phono-semantic matching. 